What's good, party people? This is According to Woods, and I have the honor and privilege of talking to a people of the GTA. That is the Gooch Training Academy in Canoga Park, California. He is the one, the only, Rayshon Roland. Rayshon, what's going on, bro? Hey, how you doing, man? It's an uh, it's an honor to uh, be on Ray there. Say it again. It's an honor to have you on. It's an honor to have you on because, like, um, I I kind of pride myself in in you know knowing the ins and outs of you know kind of mixed martial arts, you know, and especially here in California. That's kind of where I cut my teeth, you know, in yeah. Southern California doing interviews. So when like there's a name at the gym, because I think I know Anita, I, I know George Garcia, like I, I, you know, Rob Gooch and what have you. So yeah. when there's a fighter coming out of the gym and I don't know about, I'm all like, I'm giddy. It's like Christmas morning to me because I'm all like, ah, I get it. There's somebody that is going to be my friend and we're going to have some cool times. Heck yeah, most definitely, man. Most definitely. So I, so I guess, you know, the, the, the first thing, right? But I mean, obviously, combat sports, there are easier ways to make a living, right? But how did you kind of get involved? Well, um, you know, I grew up, you know, my um, my older peers and stuff like that. I was always a young cat. I hung out with older people and stuff like that. You know, I had older friends. And I always liked boxing. Like, I used to like boxing. I never really knew too much about UFC or, like, MMA or anything like that. I just was, like, you know, into Mayweather and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I used to just watch boxing. And um, my boys and stuff, sometimes, you know, the way we grew up, we grew up in this little small apartment. And, like, you know, it was a lot of us. And they used to just make us get in the gloves sometimes. But, you know, I grew up originally playing football and stuff like that. But, wow. you know, I stopped playing football, went to Montana University and stuff like that and everything. And, um, yeah, I stopped, I stopped playing. But I always, you know, I just want to stay in shape. I like, I like waking up wanting to go do something or having to go do something like, you know, or somebody on me. And then when I stopped playing football, I didn't know what, like what to do too much. So I started going to the boxing gym for a little bit. And then I didn't really, you know, it was cool, but I didn't really like it as much. And then I found out like my boy, he wanted to talk to me about some things. He was just telling me like, he think I should try like, you know, mixed martial arts. And I was like, uh, I don't know about that, man. I don't know, like boxing is cool, but you know, he talked me into it. I went to the gym and I went to GTA Academy and pff, dude, Rob is a genius, man. Like that dude, he brought it out of me and it's just many more accomplishments to, um, to go from here on out. Yeah, no. Now, I mean, now, in terms of your your football prowess, uh, what what position did you play? I played cornerback. Oh, so you you're used to kind of juking, yeah, motherfuckers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had to. You know, I could do I could do it all, man. I used to I used to play. I used to be an athlete out there, but like originally they had me playing cornerback. Wow, and I mean that's yes, a. You know that's a kind of a, a cool position to to be in in terms of parlaying that into you know mixed martial arts where you have to do a lot of different things. You gotta, you know, especially of a you know I, I know he gets a lot of crap, but Colin Kaepernick. Uh, I mean that that style actually kind of Warren Moon and and Michael Vick, right? Those are yes, you know sir. the scrambling those scrambling quarterbacks, even like uh, Vinny Testaverde. Way, way back in the day, you know? Man, them was some dogs. Right? There was some dogs right there. Heck, yeah. 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 So, I mean, it gives you a little bit of, you know, a versatility because you're not just relying on your power like you would, you know, a back, you know, running back, linebacker, exactly. full back, what have you, right? And then you're, you're, you know, not just focusing on one particular thing. You know, you got to have your, your kind of eyes – all over the place, almost like when you're driving, you kind of scan the entire landscape of things to make sure that there's, you know, kind of no flex going on, right? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. It's a lot of thinking and stuff like that you got to do, but you know, I'm, you know, like you just, I'm used to it, man. Just being under pressure, I feel like when I'm under pressure, like I perform better. So, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Now, Mick Mack, our friend in Australia, who comes to us uh, by way of Eric Bischoff. Eric Bischoff from WCW. Um, yeah, we've been on a couple times. He's been on this podcast a couple times. But Mick oh, Mack. Nice. Yes, Mick Mack actually, uh, he has this thing, right? He says he wants to cancel Adam Woods for hating thongs. And here's the deal. Did you know, Rayshawn, right? So thongs, right? When you're here yeah. in the States, now my mom is from Fiji, so I can get both the American English and the British Commonwealth English, right? Oh, that's, that's, that's dope. It's, it's, it, I mean, it's definitely a thing, right? Uh, where yeah. it didn't work out is when I was like, oh, look at that cat. But I would say it the way that English people would say, and that's a lady, he's part of parts. Exactly. That, 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 didn't, that didn't endear me to too many people, <laughs> right? Well, Mick Mac is in Australia, right? And mm -hmm. what I, you know, sandals, right, would be here. We call them flip flops in Fiji, the, you know, the things that you see, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, Mick Mac in Australia calls them thongs, right? And I put on Twitter, I was like, if that's a thong, right, that goes on your feet, then what did Lita back in the day wear over her biker <laughs> or skater shorts? Or what did Cisco think, sing about? He wasn't talking <laughs> about your feet. And that was an yeah. international hit. So in 2021, we should kind of know what thongs are, right? Yeah, not correct. For sure, for sure. <laughs> that's crazy. But Mick Mac wants to be canceled. Oh, oh Mick Mac. I'm gonna win you back, brother. I'm gonna win you back. <laughs> <laughs> man, shout out Mick Mac, man. Yeah. <laughs> so you're writing in your audience. Uh yeah, you you can say you're big in Australia, Rayshon. So there you go. You say it. Oh man. That's it. That's crazy. That's it. The power <laughs> of the, the internet. The internet. Now, obviously, um in in terms of the, the the boxers that you like, you obviously you you just talked about Floyd Mayweather, right, Junior, and then but I mean the era that you were kind of a fan, right? What what were some of your other favorites? I mean, how how into oh, uh, like right now or anytime? I mean, really, like I grew up. I I wouldn't say I grew up watching Mike Tyson because I didn't, but I I I'm, I I love Mike Tyson, man. Um, his mentality was just crazy, and um, like you know today's boxers, I like um, you know George Kambosis. I like him. I like mm -hmm. Javante Davis. Of course, Tank. Um, yep. Yep. You know I like Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney. I even like Tefimo Lopez. Like he, you know, he's pretty good himself. You know, he just lost, but. We all that's just that's just part of the sport. We all know how that go. But um yeah, you know, I really don't I, I grew up just studying because I really wanted to like if I didn't play football, I wanted to be a boxer. But then again, wow. like I started training with GTA and now I'm I do MMA, you know, and that's I don't you know, I really like boxing's cool, but like I don't even watch it if like them fighters I named were fighting, but like yeah. you won't really catch me. You know, watching too much of it. Only if them, you know, them fighters or like exciting fights or something like that, I'll turn it on. Like last night, I watched, you know, Davis versus Cruz. Um, right. I just be watching it. Literally. Hey. Yeah, that's man. That's all. I that's all I be watching. <laughs> that's a brilliant yeah. setup that you got, though. I mean, I love it because oh, yeah. I mean, especially you know, after a long day of training, your body's beat. Right, so I mean, oh, you yeah. look like you got like a, a dang near a spa, you know, oh, <laughs> to man. go home to. Yeah. So shout out to yeah. you for being able. And that's the thing, right? Because if you look at it, not as in a foot race, right? Not getting, you know, getting there to the UFC now. If you look at the totality oh, of God. your career, right? You got to exactly. look at the wellness aspect of it. And sometimes it's the things that, you know, that. Yeah, a generation before, if you told Mike Tyson about yoga in 1992, he'd be like, "Fuck off, man!" I mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for real though, man. I would. That's some scary stuff. That dude's a scary man. Yeah, he but is. it's crazy. Yeah, uh, Mick Mac also says, "Because uh, uh, Americans are strange." Uh, so 
uh, sidewalks are, is a footpath. He's kind of, they call it footpath. We call them sidewalks. It's potato, potato. It's called the yeah. whole thing up. Yeah, I'm just saying. But it's, yeah. it's, it's funny because, like, speaking of Mike Tyson specifically, right? He's a guy yeah. in his prime. You know, like, I mean, obviously, that dude was a wild dude. He was a wild, wild dude, right? Um, yeah. And I'm of an age where, like, when, man, that was a, a thing that united the community. I remember being, like, growing up in, in NorCal, and yeah. we had people from Panama, Peru, my mom and dad, you know, my dad, you know, American Black from Midwest Indiana, and then my mom from Fiji. Mexicans, Vietnamese, whatever. Mike Tyson, like those are the three or two. I would have even say Mike Tyson and Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. When they mm. fought, right? And obviously, like Tommy Hearns and what have you. Like, he, I yeah. mean, I was, you know, I grew up in the tail end of Thomas the Hitman Hearns, right? And one of the all-time greats. But when those three were fighting, like whoever had the biggest TV. If I can put it out by the pool with the extension <laughs> cord, everybody would click food. We'd have tamales. We'd have fucking curry. We'd have pho and whatever. And we'd Damn. fucking watch, you know, the greats, right? Yeah. But, and it's funny because, like, Mike Tyson now is even as beastier as he was back in the day, right? And he's smoking weed. You know, he's into the psychedelic mushrooms and you know, especially in boxing, those were kind of like frowned upon. Even in MMA, those yeah. are like, you know, especially when like, I mean, even before USADA, you know, getting like the state athletic commission to kind of ordain MMA state to state. And yeah. Whatever, like, no, we can't have that. We can't have that. Definitely. And then yeah. now things like, you know, CBD, weed, kratom, you know, yoga, massages, acupuncture. Like, who Man. doesn't have a CBD sponsor? Like, really? Man, like, that's, that, that's crazy, dude. Like, so much things is changing. That's what I'm noticing. Like, it's, it, it chips me out, dude, sometimes. Like, I just be like, dang. Like, because, I'm, you know, I grew up in – I'm a 99s baby, you know. And I'm just like – you know, I didn't seen I seen a lot, but I didn't seen too much. I'm still young, but man, I've seen like it's like I'm kind of see things like repeat itself. Like back mm-hmm. when I was a kid, come back almost, yep. and it's like scary. It's like like damn, you know, I'm big on God and stuff like that. So you know, I'm always here, left and right with my parents, my mom, my dad. Um, God's coming. We need to get you know all this crazy yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, man. So I'm just like, I got to take all this in and it's just so much for me because, you know, I'm definitely, you know, I believe in Jesus and, you know, that's how I was raised and, you know, I, I don't judge anybody uh, on their beliefs or anything like that, you know, um, but yeah, that's, it, it chips me out because it's kind of like history's repeating itself and it's a lot of stuff like, you know, that I be just be seeing. I just be chipping out sometimes, like damn, it's just yeah. crazy. Well, I mean, it's you know pro and con, right? Where I, I remember my youngest son is fourteen now, right? And he is yeah. all like, "Dad, look, yo yo," and I'm all like, "I'm of a certain age where it's almost like five years, five years, yeah, right? Yo yos, uh, like bell bottoms, and like you know those lifts, you know, like Spice World shoes with the dang." you know, lifts in them, like, they come back, yeah. like, like, every five years, because there's, like, a generation, like, when I, I kind of equate it to, like, kids in kindergarten, right? And oh, yeah, kids, You know, kids that are born today, in five years, will be in kindergarten, and that's a new thing, and they're saying things, they're doing things, Dang, like, I mean... you know, Ninja Turtles, right? Like, uh, like yeah. for me, I, I grew up with Ninja Turtles, right? And we yeah, call them, like, what you know, Michelangelo, Leonardo, you know, Raphael, whatever. And, you know, my kid, and it's kind of weird because, like, I don't know if they think that kids are dumber now, but, like, the names are Raph, Mikey, you know, they don't even say the full names or give it context because those are, you know, Michelangelo, Raphael, Leonardo da Vinci, right? Like, and they, they kind of they kind of dumb it down and whatever. And even like the, I mean, I've got a, 
I've, I've got a, a, a figure of Roth here, right? And that oh, looks all, nice. all bits of badass, right? Where the yeah. cartoon that my, my kid grew up with, his version of the Ninja Turtles, it almost looks like anime-esque and what have you. Nothing against anime or anything like that, nice. but it's just, you know, it's it's just different, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I don't know, man. It's like they have passed it nowadays. Like, you know, and that's why, you know, as his parents, because I got a kid myself. Oh. And, um, yeah, man. And it's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll be feeling like I'm a kid sometimes still, you know, I'm 22, but like, you know, I'm, um, it's just, I just try to, you know, be as more, you know, teach my son everything I didn't learn really like, you know, cause you know, my son, he's in love with Coco Melon. Every morning, that's what he asks for. And the Coco Melon is really good. It teaches the kids like how to, you know, count and the ABCs and stuff like that, you know, but yeah, man. The nowadays, stuff is just half-assed, short, and just crazy. It's not the same. No, not at all. And I, I kind of heard maybe uh, Rogan, you know, Joe Rogan might have uh, said it on one of his podcasts, but they, they were saying like, in terms of the evolution of man, right? We've evolved in the last ten years, right? More, or even twenty. Yeah. You can even say twenty specifically, right? last 20 Correct. years right to we've evolved more as human beings than we did in the 100 years before it mm. so when you think about it right it's like 1900 to 2000 and then 2000 to 2021 like uh, think of what a phone looked like back in 2000 yeah in the year 2000 i mean that's yeah. when i was i think i was I, had, I was a sophomore in high school. That's what I'm, I'm going with. I want to feel, right? But yeah. cell phones were not just flip phones, but like you had a, a, a two-way pager, right? And the two-way pager yeah. is how you could text people. And you couldn't be more than 100 feet away from them, but it, it, you basically, it was a pager, like a block yeah. that you carried around your pocket. And then you had your Nokia to call, which had like snake and like weird games on it, like a bootleg yeah. version of Tetris. And then you had the two-way pager that you could message your friends, the, the precursor to texting. Yeah. And, but you couldn't be more than a uh, hundred feet away from him. So it was almost like a non-verbal walkie-talkie, right? Yeah, that's crazy. And then, and then now, what a phone is, right? Like people yeah. had landlines, you know. Yeah. Twenty yeah. years now. Ago. Yeah. Now we them iPhones. They coming out quick with new every every time like i just got i got the iphone 12 i just got this before it came now they got the iphone 13 i'm like man it's crazy dog it's crazy it's, it's the speed of sound it's the speed of sound which i mean yeah, um, yeah. In, in in terms of where you grew up like where about are you a so-called kid or are you a transplant like where about you grow uh, up? I, uh yeah I, I grew up in pasadena california man um, okay I stayed like by Canoga and out here in Arlita, California, probably like 20 minutes, but I stay over here with my girlfriend and okay. my kid and stuff like that. And you know, we um I just be working and stuff like that. But yeah, my hometown is Pasadena, California. That's where I grew up born and raised. And wow. yeah, man. Yeah, so, so so when you're when you were playing uh for uh f football, like where what school were you playing for in, in high school? Uh in high school, I, I went so it's it's funny because my freshman year, I was living with my dad and I um, I was just you know more over the place. I was with my dad out here actually in the valley, in uh, Northridge. But I went to Monroe High School, but I only went there for a year. You know, I played wow. there. Then I I went out with my mom to San Bernardino, but then like I ended up moving with my coach and my auntie and uncle. Like I was living with a lot of people in high school. I was all wow. over the place. But um, I graduated from Arcadia High School. Okay, yeah, in Arcadia, California, absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yeah, I went there. I played ball there, and then um, I went junior college to East Los Angeles for a year. And then I went to College of the Canyons. Okay, yeah, in Santa Clarita. Yep, I played okay. there and went to Montana University out of there. 
Wow, that's a cool deal. I, I, do you watch wrestling at all? Ah, uh, no, nah, I don't never. I don't watch wrestling. Okay, because there, there's a guy uh, by the name of the Fiend Bray Wyatt. He, I mean, they released him, uh, but he was a pretty big star for them over the last like five or six years, uh, maybe even longer nice. than that. But he actually went to College of the Canyons. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, so. I mean that's that's kind of cool that I mean that you you kind of basing your um, the the credibility of people who come from College of the Canyons, you know, like because people yes, are like sir. oh that guy from Maroon Five he he went to UCLA this person went to USC or whatever nobody really talks about College of the Canyons so you be the one you know that you win that world championship yeah, yeah. in MMA you're like ah oh, you put College of the Canyons on the map. Oh man, I got love for them. They already know what's up, man. They know what's up, man. I got love for them. They they helped me through a lot. Mad love for them, man. Absolutely. Now, I mean, you're somebody uh, much like myself. Like I I grew up all over the place. Like uh, my you know, I was born in you know San Francisco in the Bay Area. Then we moved to Fiji, where my mom's from, for a little bit, right? Not not too long. And then we yeah. came back to the States, back to the Bay, then from the Bay to Indiana, Indiana to Las Vegas, Las Vegas to Georgia, oh, Las Vegas, New Mexico, New Mexico to Georgia, and then Georgia to Inglewood in 95, 96, where I, I thought I was being cool as a nine-year-old kid. Like, I'm going to wear a Sonic the Hedgehog mm. t-shirt or whatever, and not really knowing that I was in a blood neighborhood. <laughs> I didn't know anything about gangs worth a damn. And I, you know, I walk out yeah. and my cousin, who I can't really give a shit about, it, grabs me and is like, do you want to die today? And I'm like, what are you even talking about? It's Sonic the Hedgehog. And it's like, like I live Man. right on Earth between Queen and Regent, which might as well have been, ah, it's, it's Bloods, man. That was yeah. right behind Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles at, you know, in Inglewood. Oh, yeah. Just right behind yeah, it. I heard about that spot. Yeah, man. Out L.A. or like, I don't know if they consider Inglewood as L.A. or not. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not, you know, too much familiar with L.A. But, man, I go to, like, I have been to Slauson before. Yeah. And, man, man, it's just so uncomfortable, man. Like, it just... You know, just too much, too much for me, man. I don't really, I don't trust LA, man. I don't like going out there like that. It's just too much going on, man. That's why I try to just, you know, get to where I got to get to, get back home. That's that. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I try to, I don't put myself in situations. Get that. Uh, it, no, hundred percent. I mean, it's it's better to not. Uh, that's something that I I tried to do. But I mean, for me, even though I didn't grow up, you know, I grew up from nine on in Inglewood, but I kind of, that's everybody, all oh, woods from Inglewood because yeah. that's just me. It's it's the longest that I spent anywhere. And, you know, they say about New York, right? If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Well, like, yeah. the first two years of high school, the amount of people, my, my friends who died from drive-by shootings or getting caught up or getting stabbed or baby mama drama or what have you, like, yeah. you, know, it, it, you know, like, I I feel it kind of set me up where I could succeed no matter where I went because you know what to do. Like it, it it's funny because people talk about like third eye or whatever, but like that thing goes up. My wife, you who grew up in in Bakersfield, right? She doesn't yeah. get it. When I'm you know when we go to a spot that's unfamiliar, I'm already checking the exits. I'm seeing who's there. If anybody's squirrely, what what's people's like, mood? Yeah. What's the vibe? Because like. Because run wrong, it's it's yeah. a wrap. Yeah, nah, facts for real, man. You gotta be aware of your surroundings, twenty four seven, man. That's that's really important. Cause you know, it's people out here that just we don't know what they thinking. You know, we don't know how they woke up, what they going through. Even though that don't, it doesn't matter what you're going through. You don't take it all on the next person. But hey, some people out here are just crazy, man. Yeah. Like, you gotta, you yeah, know, it's. Watch. It, everything just yeah you gotta have the your that that uh the scanner you gotta you gotta look peripheral and, and see what's going on yeah you know? yeah for real nick max says adam grew up in beverly hills rodeo drive uh no never <laughs> i don't even like going by there now i feel as uncomfortable in rodeo drive as i would feel you know uncomfortable in like slosson and, and <laughs> like it's weird it's so weird but then i also think like beverly hills is like 
the the least racist, sexist place ever because you can be LBGTQ, black, Korean, Cambodian, you know, lesbian, straight, whatever. As long as you got money, they don't give a damn. Yeah, nah, for real. Like, they for don't real. give a damn. So theoretically, it's one of the last holdouts of the least racist places in LA. Right. <laughs> now, it's crazy. Now, in terms of, you know, all of the places that you grew up, right? Now that you're, you know, you've got your significant other, you guys have a child together. How's that stability, you know, and following your, your, your calling in MMA, right? Like, how's that stability feel? Because for me, like, it, it's trippy. Like, I I live not too far from where you grew up in, in Pasadena, and my kid goes to, like, a, you know, a, before pandemic, went to a charter school, right? Yeah. And it's like, you know, kind of Los Files and charter school and whatever. And, you know, sometimes I kind of wish, like, Maybe we went to to Inglewood or whatever because there's some things that again we were talking about the scanners and the peripherals that yeah. because he lives kind of a cleaner life, not as gritty a life as I did, you know, and growing up in a different zip code than I did. I think there's you know there's things that he doesn't see that I might see, right? The certain yeah, hazards. Correct. But yeah, you, I feel you. Right? But you yourself, right? Like. The fact that you're not bouncing in place to place, you have a stable upbringing, you're a stable, you know, you're bringing up a child with a person you love, you're at a gym that is really conducive, you know, and after finding, you know, like football, you know, you're like, oh man, like that's a fire, there's a competitive fire, and once that yeah. goes, you're like, okay, what can I get my fix on, right? And you found it. Yeah. So how does that, how does that feel to be stable? Oh man, it, it feels it, it feels great, man. Like it, it's just you know I I'm the type of guy, you know I don't let nothing really you know try to like I, I try not to overthink, you know. Like it's good being stable, you know. It's it's good and everything, you know. I'm working. That was my most important. Like I wanted to get a job, you know, to be able to provide, you know, and um. It, it feels good, man. Like it's a blessing. Like it's the biggest blessing ever. You know, I don't ask for. I don't. You know, I don't really care for too much. You know, I'm good. I'm happy. I'm doing what I love. You know, I love to fight. Like, and you know, I'm doing what I love, man. And you know, I'm working, and it's just it's just a dream chase. You know, I'm just I'm just chasing my dream. It's it's not nothing's. You know, nothing. I don't really see too much like anything stopping me but myself. So, you know, and I just, one thing about it is, um, what's the word for it? Like, I want to say, like, um, time management. Right. Is my, that, that got to be my best friend, you know? Because I, I just, I, I don't, I don't have time to do anything. Like, I, I got to squeeze things in. I got to, especially with working and stuff like that. So I'll make that my best friend. And, yeah, man, I'm, it's it's good. Like I, I love being stable, you know, and I, I just I just love the life I'm living, man. I'm no worries, you know. Just blessed and just doing what I love to do, man. Can't complain at all. Nah, I can. I mean, you're you're kind of bringing me to tears, man, because I I know how that is. Like uh, when my wife and I first got together, like we are one of the friends. Like you know, we moved into a spot and they gave us a table, and I cried. Because I hadn't had a table since I left the Bay and shit, like, since I was eight, maybe. And there was Man. one other time where in Inglewood where my mom had a spot and my dad had a spot and whatever. But, like, like, and that was my mom's table. That was my dad's table. But having one of my own after sleeping on people's, like, floors and couches and, yeah. you know, like, enrolled in one school and six weeks we'd be out in whatever and man you know, tell me so, about it yeah you know uh, one of the things i i mean uh, up until just the beginning of the summer i didn't we i've been with my wife 15 years right we have never gone on a vacation nothing like that because in my head my mom would be like you know to kind of gloss over the fact that we we're moving and we were never going to see the people or around ever again especially 
you know, with no social media, no phones, no nothing, right? She would be yeah. like, oh, we're just going to go vacation here. And we would just be there, you know? And yeah. we almost had to kind of, like, recalibrate everything that we we had done up until that point. So, like, that's yeah. why I say, like, I, I know I know that. So I'm proud of you, dude, just for that. Oh, right, man, appreciate that, man, you know? Appreciate that so much, man, for real. Just got to, you know, it's, just, it's a grind, man. That's all. We grinding, man. I see you grinding too, man. It's all a grind, man. That's that's that's, that's what it's that's all it. about. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, you know, uplifting others, right? And that's, you know, start, starting off this podcast, right? It was, you know, I've done yes, interviews, sir. you know, for MMA and Pro Wrestling in SoCal over the last four, almost five years, right? And then, and right before pandemic, actually two years before pandemic, I was going all the way from like not too far away from, you know, Pasadena, all the way out to Stanton oh, yeah. to, do, to do the Gym Crashers, uh, you know, deal. And some nights it would take me two hours to get to Orange County just to do it. Or, or when I graduated from high school and went to radio school, it was four hours each way on a bus from Inglewood mm. to Huntington Beach, right? Just to get airtime, just to you know, apply your trade. So the fact that I'm in mm. the corner of my living room and I can do the thing, it's not lost on me, right? And everybody no. who started podcasts during the pandemic, I think we are all trying to figure it out, right? We All this stuff was being thrown at us and whatever, and we didn't know what one way to turn. There was riots, there was yeah. fire in Australia, Kobe died. The, like, it's just, it was just like, the, it was like Lemony Snickets, right? The series yeah. of unfortunate events, that's what right. it was, right? But it was just kind of reaching out to each other and seeing like, hey, you good. And guess Networking. what? Yeah. Right, but, but also like, just checking in, like, hey, some of my friends who were professional wrestlers or MMA fighters on the cusp of getting a WWE tryout, a UFC Contender Series, a Bellator tryout, whatever, you know, and then that all went away. And then, you know, you started to go through an identity crisis. Like, who am I really if not if not for this community that has been so rich for all of us that are involved? Who am I outside of it? And we all kind of had to go through that. So that yeah. was it. It was like, let's see how people were going right meet meet friends meet new friends you know i'd, I'd oh, open yeah. up instagram and whatever and i'm like ah that person looks interesting dm them bing there we go we got a podcast going and the you know people are commenting and everything and we we kind of got through it together you know rather exactly. than rather than do like a tape thing and whatever and if tape podcasters are cool awesome whatever but for me i i dig i dig the frenetic energy of like we're not knowing what's going to be said or what's going to be done, or whatever, but we're, we're going to do an hour and it's going to be fun. Yeah. yeah. Facts. Facts, man. So, talk about identity, right? You moved to the Midwest to play football, right? Oh, man. Yeah. Out there, Montana University. Yeah. What was that For, like? Uh, because, I mean, yeah, because Richie Miranda, he, I think uh, he grew up. He, he fights out of CSW under Ben Jones, and he went to Nebraska, but living in in Orange County, right? Oh and yeah, that's so. It's a little different. That's mean, a little different right there. Exactly. So, uh, what was that like? Kind of, you know, being away from a lot of what you held dear and what you knew to Montana, which might not be that. Ah, uh, um. Well, I'm a, I'm kind of different, man. Like. I, I like to expand. Like I like to, so it was it was a lot different. Yeah, it was a, it was a lot different, man. Like I didn't really get to enjoy. Cause I wasn't there that long. I was only there for like a few weeks. Okay. But um, yeah. I, I mean, it it was a lot different. You know, it was just it. I really couldn't like go enjoy anything like that because when i was there i was in fall camp yeah so like fall camp that's they take dang near the whole freaking like the whole time you're like you only get like two hours to yourself dude 
Mm-hmm. And then you got to go to sleep and do it all over again. And I was in that, I was stuck in that phase, you know, and um, I didn't really get to like, you know, do anything like that. So I was just always, you know, I met, I didn't really meet nobody outside of my football team like that, or like, you know, a little couple basketball players and stuff like that, you know, a couple athletes, but I don't really, you know, meet anybody like that, but it, it's definitely like, it was cold out there. And then yeah. it gets super human too. Like the sun, the sun wouldn't shine and it'd be all still like hot, but like sticky. It was just, the weather was just a trip out there, dude. But other than that, like, yeah, it was, it, it was cool though. I liked it. I like, you know, I'm- being everywhere. Sorry about that. No, no, that's that's brilliant. You know, being being able to be versatile, right? No matter what life throws at you or what situations present itself, you know, you're 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 there, you're present in the moment and you you're you're feeling what it is. You know, but then mm-hmm. the, do, doing stuff like that also, you know what you want and versus what you don't want. Yeah. Correct. Oh, I, I can't. Could you hear me? All right, perfect. Say something now. Oh, I can't hear. Uh, I can hear me, but I can't hear you. Wait, can you hear me now? Uh, dang it. Um, uh, do I like, should I leave and come back? All right. According to Woods, and that is Rayshon, uh, who trains out of the Gooch Academy in uh, Canoga Park, California, and he's amazing. I, I didn't know it, but uh, we kind of, even though it isn't exactly the same path, similar path, just kind of growing up all over the place and everything like that. Um, but it's fascinating to hear his story. I can't wait till he jumps back on. Um, which look. Look, he's back. He's back. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. He's, there we go. It's I think, got, you, I think you got a call or a text and it threw everything off. Which you might yeah, want to pro- throw up you might want to throw up the uh, uh do not disturb. Oh yeah, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I should have told you that before. That's my bad. <laughs> nah, it's all good, man. Yeah. We live and we so, learn. We live and we learn. So speaking of living and learning, right? You said coming from Montana uh, and then, you know, kind of trying to find yourself, right? Because you didn't have that, you know, way of elicting that competitive spirit that had been in you and burning within you for the mo- the better part of your life, right? So yeah. then you you met a friend and he was like, uh, boxing and what have you, but then they they bring up Gooch, you know, GTA, Gooch Training Academy. What was your f- first perception of, like, what it was going to be? And then what was the first day like? Uh, When I went to GTA? Yeah. Oh, man, I was fucking nervous. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. I, I was nervous as heck, man. Like, I, um... I didn't know, you know, but like when I looked at it, I, I honestly I went on this on the on the website. I found him on the Instagram. It was one day I was just I was home. I actually was just getting over COVID. It was a minute ago, like when it first came out. I was uh, just getting over COVID. Yeah, I was I had caught it a long time ago when it first came out, and I was just one day I was my two weeks was up. I was done quarantine and I had tested. Uh, But um, 
You can hear me? Oh yeah, we're good. And then um yeah. I um was calling all these gyms and you know, looking up different gyms and I just went off of like, you know, basically I just found the vibe. I'm like, let me go check out GTA. And I went and checked it out, man. And my first day, I was scared, but I, I like I wasn't scared, but I was more like Damn, I don't want to get in here and embarrass myself. I don't know where these people are. I know that I still got a lot to, you know, I got a lot to accomplish. I got a lot to, you know, I don't want to go in here and be tired off jump roping. I don't know how many rounds they go. Just overthinking because that's just the type of guy I am. I always overthink. So I'll be working on that, like, with myself, trying not to overthink so much. But um, it was definitely the, the best. The first day was just, it was the best, dude. Like, I fell in love with it. I was like, oh, wow. Like, Coach Gooch, he, Coach Rob, like, he he doesn't he he really like he he loves his he loves like you come in his gym and you know you're respectful and you know you're coachable you know you're able to you know you're just respectful you know he he will love you man like he's he's a loving he's a he's a he's a loving person he loves his his um you know he loves his kids man like like he looks out after us man and i i wouldn't ask for any better like I love that gym, dude. And I told him I'm rocking with him forever because he just, you know, it's more, it's not just like, oh, I'm getting there just to go work out and just hit, go to the gym. Nah, it's more like I'm going to see my family. We're going to get this work in. Blood, sweat, and tears. Like, and dude, that dude, he's a, he's a beast, man. Like, and I'm just, you know, we just growing, man. It's, it's only the beginning. Yeah, it's only the beginning. Know, and I mean, it, Rob has fought all over. Like, you know, that's a tenured veteran. But, you know, just in terms of his jujitsu, you know, he, you know, got his, uh, I believe he got his black belt at Gracie Baja oh, yeah. Mortgage, you know, uh, way, way back in the day. You know, so in terms of astute, you know, practitioners of jujitsu, there's a lot of them, you know, uh, in LA, uh, you know, the greater Southern California area. But Rob, Gooch is, is one of the most respected ones, you know, not a Gracie, not named Gracie or a, a Machado. Yeah. Them dudes are thing, them dudes are great. Like yeah. man. And he's heavy on the jiu-jitsu too, man. He been he been he been having me, he been telling me I gotta get on it. Cause I've been doing my Muay Thai a lot. You know, I just had my yeah. last Muay Thai fight. Right. And um uh, you know, we're going to give me an occasion soon. We just, you know, we're, we're working on my jiu-jitsu skills and stuff like that, you know, getting getting it up to par. And he just been, he been on me about that because I've been slacking with that. But, you know, it's all understood because I was doing, you know, I've been focusing doing on Muay Thai, but now, you know, we're, we're getting after it all around. So, and he's, he's, man, that dude. And he's active, too. Like, he'll get in there. He'll spar with us. He'll roll with us. Like, you know, and he's just, he's just, man, that dude is different. Yeah. Straight beast. <laughs> yeah, he is. And uh, the greatest is Nuski the Nightmare. Shout out to greatest. Yeah, man. Uh, which I got to ask, like, in, in terms of, you know, coming from that, that you know, football based background in terms of athletics. Uh, did you take to anything better or worse, you know, grappling, striking, or um, was it all kind of new to you? Um, uh, it's it's I, I, I take striking, I'm a striker, like I, 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 I love to strike, and but I mean. That, that's my coach, you know, Coach Rob, he told me that that don't mean shit. Like, you can, yeah, every, you can know how to strike, like, you know, but you want to be able to work everything, you know, everything is good. Like, I, I really didn't like jiu-jitsu like that. Like, I just, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know anything about jiu-jitsu. I just found out about jiu-jitsu, like, when I started fighting, you know, and... I didn't really, you know, it was so crazy because I'm like, are we doing karate? Like when I first found out about the gi and stuff like that, I just think it was karate and it's, it's, you know, it's totally different, you know, but now I understand like I'm in a mental, like, okay, I might not like doing it because I'm not good right now. But once I, 
you know, start continuously like doing it over and over and over again, and I'm getting better and I'm noticing I'm getting better, like, and I know I'm getting better, I start liking it, but I have no choice, man. I, I want to be a fighter and, you know, that's where I am. And You are what you are, and I, I, I love it, you know, but in terms of like, you know, that kind of reminded me of like every time, you know, being around non-jujitsu people, you know, like you have your gi or whatever, and it's just like they start they start throwing chops at you and be like, hey, you're doing that jui jitsu again, and like start trying to karate <laughs> chop you, and I'm like, oh, if you only knew, like there's none of it, <laughs> none of it, oh. man, it's crazy, dude. Which you know, and it's and it's Crazy. fun. Like, well, it's, it's fun you know, though. Like, it is fun. It is absolutely fun. And you were saying, like, you know, the, the first day, right? Being at, at GTA, man, it's scary as fuck, man. Because that's the, that's the thing. And yeah, especially like jujitsu, or, or actually all of it, yeah. right? Like, let's say you see people sparring, and you see a motherfucker get cracked, right? In a way where if you are, you know. On the block, in the bar, you know, on a Saturday mm -hmm. night or whatever, and you see somebody get cracked like that, you know it's lights out. And then the dude is like, or it's not even a dude; it could be a girl. Like they, the girls fighting, you know, the inspiring or whatever. They'll crack each other, yeah. And the head go like bobbleheads, and then they smile, and we're like, smile, it yeah, on. yeah. It's like zombies. Yeah. It's like zombies. Like what? What are? What are we doing here? So it, it, yeah. it, can, it, it can be a bit overwhelming, right? You know, but when did you feel like you're like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of getting something here, you know, like my strikes are getting a little bit crisper. I'm remembering the combos. Like what, what uh, point yeah. did, in your evolution did you kind of like, okay, this is the place for me? Um, Really like, um, I want to say, uh, I gave it like I really it was like I, I uh, when I was basic I want to give it probably like a month after like okay. a month after like I still knew like okay I, you know I got a lot to accomplish it was more of just you know showing that I was willing willing to put in the work and willing to you know just come 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 and just keep coming every day you know not miss try not to miss no days you know um but yeah like a month in i start getting comfortable start knowing you know more combos and just you know moving around you know with more confidence just feeling more like electric like you know and just i just felt it kicking in like i felt the training working and that's what made me even more confident i'm like okay this training is working like and i know it's working because Coach, his thing, Coach uh, Rob, one of his thing is like, if you want to be a fighter, then you're going to spar. Mm -hmm. Even even if you come in and you just want to train, he will still prefer you to spar. You don't have to, but he will prefer you to spar just so you can, you know, be safe and be able to know how to control yourself in a situation, or be able to like defend yourself in a situation. That's that's the word for it. And um. Yeah, man, and that's 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 exactly that's really pretty much what it was. You know, I was just born getting beat up, beat up, just beating people up, get beat up again. You know, just it just goes and it's, it just goes around and around. Like you get you beat up people, you get beat up, and it just just goes around. It doesn't matter. It's just all practice, and we all there to help each other. And our team is great, man. Like we got a great team. We all love each other. And it's it's real, like it's like real love. It's real. It's like real grinding. Like me and my boy we can spar hard. Somebody that's from outside looking in can come in and it could be their first day in the gym, like you said, like my first day, and they can see me and my boy sparring, or you know, one of the one of my teammates. We could be sparring. They'd be like, "Dang, like, is they trying to knock each other out, or like they out here hitting hard?" But like, it ain't even that. Like, you know, it's all love. That's how we look at it. You know. And that's why I love my team so much, cause they. I'm not gonna see too much people who are as good as them right now at the amateur level, as far as like what I'm doing. 
because I'm doing MMA and Muay Thai, like, you know, and I do Muay Thai fighting and stuff. So, man, that's, it's just, you just, they, I love my team. They keep me prepared, man. Like, they literally got me to smash my last opponent. And I was just, it was all, they, it was all them. They helped me, man, get, have that hunger in me. That's why, you know, I had fought like I did, man, all because of my team. So I think that, I mean, and that's, that's one thing that I think gets overlooked a lot, you know, and how a vibe of a gym could be. Because you could go to uh, Jackson Wink, a, a Black House, like, you know, one of the American top team, you know, one of those like Buku gyms that everybody thinks, that, yeah. oh, if I need to be a fighter and I want to be a champion, I have to go there. But those things are happening in every, you know, in every gym, you know, there's world oh, yeah. champions you know, being trained at every gym, you know, it, it's no, not just, it, you have to go someplace or whatever. And now you might feel you need that, you know, but it's, it's here nor there. That doesn't make you a champion just because you go to a particular gym. And we kind of saw it yeah, actually in basketball when LeBron left Cleveland and he got paired with like Chris yeah. Bosh and Dwayne Wade. They're like the big three. Right. And they were, you know, and here Kobe and Jack, right. It took about yeah. a year for them to, you know, get the synergy that they needed to end up doing great things. But everybody just assumed, oh, they're here. So everything is going to be, give me that ring, kiss the ring, what have you. Yeah, I and remember it, that. It takes, right. It, and it takes, it, it takes time, right? And especially yeah. your trust in your team, your trust in your coaches. Because theoretically speaking, it doesn't happen a lot. But... It, you are their player one to kind of use a video game, you know, terminology. You're the player one. The coach is the player, and it's their game plan that's going to get you through. But you can also die. And like I said, it doesn't happen a lot, but it can yeah. happen, right? So yeah, that fact. trust that trust that you have to have with your coach and with your fighter, I mean, it's immeasurable what the benefit is. Facts. Yeah. Like you gotta, the trust gotta be there, hundred percent. That's 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 what it is with me. I like you know my trust runs a long way, and I you know I, I trust my coach a hundred percent. He he never gave me a reason not to. Rob always you know straight and narrow guy. He's not gonna sugarcoat anything. He's gonna tell you how it is. If he thinks you're not ready, he's gonna tell you you're not ready. Go work more. Like he just that's just how it is, man. And that's what makes me like like love him even more like man he's just so real dog like and it's just you know that's what i like about it so much man it just is just real family no 100 percent, and that that actually permeates because fight life nation marcos martinez who was actually at spar star 40, 48 says team gta was on fire at spar star 48 it was his first time seeing them, and he can't wait to see you guys and gals again. Oh man, I can't. I appreciate that, man. Definitely gonna see us out here, man. The takeover is coming. We coming. Trust me. We Absolutely. coming for everything. Absolutely. Now, in terms of like you know the you training, you know, and then taking your first fight, how much time was in between that? Um, I was training probably for like, like a year, almost yeah. probably like a year, like eight months, you know, I, um, I kind of elevated pretty fast, you know, cause my striking was pretty good. And then coach cleaned it up, you know, cleaned yeah. up my kicking and stuff. And it just worked on my jiu-jitsu, of course, but you know, Muay Thai, that's why he got me doing Muay Thai fights now getting into it's my first time fighting. Like my first, my last fight was what, November 19th. That was right. my first fight, my debut. But it's my Muay Thai debut, you know, and coach just wanted to give me, like, we're going to give me in a few more of them before we get me in the cage just to yeah. get me, just to get me used to the, you know, the feeling and and stuff like that. And, you know, that's pretty much it. But it um, it probably, but and I, I've been in fight camp. I, I, I had a long fight camp. I had a pretty decent fight camp, too. Probably, like, I want to say, like, Probably like eight weeks. Oh, that's that's huge. Because yeah. I mean, on average, it's about six weeks, right? Is yeah. If you 
if you get lucky. Obviously, short notice fights happen and whatever. But six week is like, you know, kind of, you know, the, 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 the middle. Yeah, it, absolutely. So, you know, it's cool that you got eight weeks to kind of, you know, like you said, you know, you, you know, obviously there's going to be some tactical, you know, um, you know, ideologies on who your opponent is and what gym they come from or whatever. But also, you want to raise, right? We kind of heard it with Israel versus Jan Blachowicz, right? When Israel went up in weight, you know, to challenge for the the light heavyweight title, uh, you know, the is Israel's coach Eugene yeah. Berman was like. There was a point in the road where we were like, do we want to get better in our skills or do we just want to gain weight so Izzy can, you know, be the same size as a 205er, right? Yeah. And they were like, we're going to improve skills. So in theory, what if he had, what if Izzy had the size, you know, or the half and half it? Or what if they, you know, if there's a fork in the road and if they just took the other fork rather than the one they, you know, took, could Israel mm-hmm. be both middleweight and light heavyweight champion right now? And it's just those things that'll kind of rack your brain, isn't it? Man, um, I think so. That's my favorite UFC. That's my favorite. That's my favorite fighter, like of all time. You know, um, it, well, John Jones, I like him a lot too. Yeah. But, but like right now, like that's that's my go-to. Like Izzy Adesanya, like dude. Yeah, if he would have gained weight, I mean, like, I like honestly, like, it, I don't know, man. That fight was kind of hard. Like, I didn't. He he won because he just, you know, he got a couple takedowns in there, I think, yeah. and stuff like that, you know. But um, I definitely feel like if Izzy would have just gained some weight and just, you know, worked on stuff in that takedown, I mean. He could have won. He he was he wasn't that far. I don't feel like, right? Because it went so, to a decision. Yeah, you know? no, it definitely. Yeah, it was a decision. You know, he 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 lasted all five rounds in the octagon with him. But right, I mean, you know, things happen. It's it's wild to think about, and, and you know, like you could go like I'm going to develop a skill set. I'm going to level up, so to speak, right? But you don't have the size to make any of that stuff work. You know. Let's say, yeah. let's say if he did stop a takedown. Well, when you got, you know, it's just like being, you could be a buff dude, right? Yeah. You know, 320 pounds, 2% body fat, blah, blah, blah. An 18 wheeler comes, it don't matter. Man, now nah, that's, that's true. Right? So, like, yeah, you know, so I, I don't know. It's it's, but, th- but see, that's what I love about combat sports. It's like, th- it's those, little things right you know yeah. what, you ate, what your mood was going into fight cap how your mood is during fight cap where you trade you know whether you train with a bunch of world champions at a world-class gym or Bert, you know like what is it uh trevor whitman out in colorado or you know like he's got maybe four or five guys and girls but it's usman it's um uh, what's his name uh gaichi it's Thug Rose. Oh, yeah. Rose. Maybe, yeah. Maybe a couple other people, but he keeps it small, right? You know? Freddie Edgar, uh, wasn't he part of that or am I? Frank, Freddie I know Frankie Edgar? was. Frankie was. Frank uh, Edgar the, or something like that? Yeah. Frankie is in New Jersey. I, I want to say with like Mark Henry, the guy that he okay. was. An, yeah, an MMA right. coach. Yeah, an MMA coach and a pizza, like. He owns a pizzeria in like Tom's River, New Jersey, somewhere. <laughs> That's kind of wild. You're like you train fighters in your like basement or attic, and then you also have the yeah. best pizza spot like in the entire like county or something. It's Mark Henry, Damn. man. Yeah, good way That's to multitask. I'm just saying. <laughs> now, Fight Life Nation says a uh, question for Ray Sean. Yeah. What are your short-term goals uh, for your future, and uh, where do you want to be at this time next year? Um, my short-term goals, man. I just want to improve. I want to get better, um, day by day. Take it day by day. You know, um, um, you know, just 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 work on the things that you know. Any holes that I have, I just want to fill them up. You know, and just improve, man. Like. 
and just be in a better situation than I am, you know, I just want to be living next year, man, and just be able to, you know, continue, you know, be healthy and just do do what I can do, man. Um, and, you know, hopefully next year my name be, you know, up there even more, you, you know, like I still got a lot, man. I, I got a lot of dreams and stuff, but I just want to take it day by day, man, and just, you know, be great. That's all it is, man. Um, and it's just day by day, man. And just leave it in God's hands and just grind it out, man. Ain't no telling where I'll be in a year, you know. I I can be anywhere. I could be at the top, you know. I could still be here grinding, man. I just, whenever, you know, God tells me it's my time, that's when my time is, you know, it's going to be my time to shine. I like it. I, I like it. That's that's great. Now, obviously, Rishon, there have been a lot of people, both professionally and personally, that have helped you get to where you are now. So I want to take as long as you like. Let's get some shout outs out of the way. Oh, man. Um, dang, I got so many people to shout Go out. For man. Go first for it. Go for it. This time is yours. Off, first off, man, I want to uh, I want to I want to thank God, man. Shout out to God, man. Shout out to, you know, the almighty man, the almighty God, man. Um, shout out my mom. Shout out my dad. Um, shout out all my Pasadena family, all my Valley family. Shout out GTA. Hey, GTA, the best gym ever. You know, um, shout out my grandma, RIP. Uh, and just, you know, shout out all my loved ones. Got to be the best way to, to, you know, to say it. Because I wish I could shout all you guys out that I'm thinking of right now. But shout out my loved ones. Um, and, yeah, man. And free my best friend, man. Shout out to Amir. Amir Davis. You know, you know my, my best friend, he locked up right now. But um, shout out to him, man. I, I love that dude. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it right there. I... I... You know what they say that a um, it takes a village, right? And so having that village re behind you, no matter where you are in your life and whatever, just to have a solid core, you know, to kind of get you where you need to be, you know, that's that that's godliness almost. Yeah. Yeah, yes. man. Now, um, now our our friend Mick Mac, he wants he he's got some. The, like Mighty Duck questions? Are you familiar with that movie, <laughs> Rishon? Uh, I'm not, but hey, I'm, I'm open to anything, man. Look, all right, Let let's hear. go for it. So he <laughs> says, Mighty Ducks 3 is the best. What about Coach Bombay's face turn? And face turn is like good guy turn, right? I, yeah. That's, that's some wrestling terminology, right? So face is yeah. a baby face, good guy or good girl. Bad girl, bad guy is a heel. So, uh, and then he said, actually, it's Coach Orion. Sorry, but and uh, and he says, quack, ask about B three, and we we did. Now, uh, shout out to to actually uh, Emilio Estevez, right? Because Emilio Estevez is, I mean, he rocks his his culture. I believe they're from Cuba, the family, right? But his dad and brother took the name Sheen. You know, Martin Sheen is the dad, and Charlie Sheen is the younger brother, right? Oh, nice. So, so shout out to Emilio Estevez for actually rocking the actual family name and not, you know, kind of like, I don't know. I don't want to say like washing it out. Yeah, that's it. Washing it out and whatever, you know, he, <laughs> he rocked it. He was like, I'm Emilio Estevez. Uh, my dad's, you know, Carlos Estevez. And I, I think, it, yeah, uh, Carlos Estevez is actually – Charlie Sheen's real name is is Carlos. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but shout out to I mean, because Emilia Estevez is the coach in the first one and two, possibly three, uh, Mighty Ducks movie, and I think they're they're going to do another one, but I, he hasn't signed on, unfortunately, and that sucks. But also, a lot of the guys from the Mighty Ducks movie either ended up on meth or joined Sci Scientology. I'm not saying there's a connection, but I'm I'm just saying <laughs> it's a thing. It's a it's a thing. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. yeah. So, Rich, now for people that want to get a little bit uh, more of a angle on you, find out what you're doing, 
fight news, life news, and everything. And I believe I link both your your gym as well as your Instagram in the comment section. But uh, I've said it once before, but it bears repeating. Where can people find you on social media? Oh, um, you can you can find me on social media at uh, MBN Newski and MBN underscore Newski. Um, on Instagram, I only have an Instagram. Um, yeah, man, and I got you know we 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 got a couple dates for my next fight coming up. Um, just stay tuned. Follow me on Instagram, and we can figure everything out. And everything you know, I'm 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 working. Just know I'm working. I'm ready. And it's time. Absolutely. Take over. Which, before we go, uh, into oh yes, I blew Mick Max mind. Yes, Charlie Sheen. His name is Carlos Estevez. Uh, Martin Sheen is Martin Estevez, I believe, senior. And then uh, yeah, Mila Estevez is the 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 brother, the older brother. So there you go. Just blew your blew your mind a little bit. But that could also have been. The uh, Scientology and meth thing too. It's, it's yeah. weird. It just gets weird. But <laughs> where does that the the Instagram name come from? The MBN News. Where does that come? Um, from? That that comes from. So that's crazy. You asked that because. So my boy, I used to I used to like rap a little bit. You know, I used to rap a little bit, and you know, I got I got my cousins and stuff. My boys, my family. Um, that's from out here in the valley. It's this thing called so MBN stands for must be nice. Ah, and, yeah, must be nice, and it's 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 like it, I'm more like um, I bet I'm more like uh, my girlfriend just walking in here now. That's but, cool. um, yeah, but um, I'm, I'm more like um, basically like I'm 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 not that new. It's been a while now, but. My boy, like his his grandpa and them, you know, they had like this little thing. It's like it's not even a rap thing. It's like more like a family, like a family thing. And um, you know, they accepted me. They wanted me to be part of it, you know. And I um, I was rapping. And I used it. I used it as my rap name, like MB and Nooski must be nice Nooski. And um, yeah, I just kept it. I just kept it as my headline, and you know. I'm part of NBN too, so it means a lot to me. And you know, like you know, that's my family. You know, shout out Paco, shout out NBN. Forgot about that. And then, um, yeah. But other than that, like, yeah, they, it's like a family thing. But they really, they they rap a lot. Like you know, my boys and them, my boy No Cap, my boy uh, Devon. Like they are, they they be rapping and stuff like that. I used to rap with them, but now that I fight and stuff like that, you know, I don't have no time for it. But they still take over. They be taking over in the studio. I'm trying to take over on the on the mats, man. <laughs> and yeah, so but it's that's it's, it's like more of a just you know little family thing. You know, we meet up, have barbecues and stuff. You know, we be having the shirts. We go model to, in the shirts and stuff like that. You know, go take little pictures and stuff. You know, just little. It's 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 cool though. It's really I mean, dope about. And again, you know, you're carrying that over, obviously, them in the rap genre, and you're kind of broadening the brand and the appeal, you know, in a whole new thing, because you're the only one in the crew that's doing, you know, fighting, right? Yeah, well, we got one more, my boy, um, Xavier, he he, he fights as well, he comes to GTA as well, he's going to be making his debut soon, too, but yeah, he's... um, He's definitely uh, he's he's one of the uh, guys too. You know, he's closer to them. Like he's the one who, you know, actually was like, "Hey, come, you know, come be part of it with us. Like, come, you know, it's a family thing. It's a movement. Like, come, come join it. You know." And I can see why now. I'm just like, "Oh yeah, forget it, man." Like, gave me some little gear. I'll be repping the gear sometimes and stuff like that. And yeah, man, we just. Elevated man, my boy be sending me like you know all types of you know scriptures and stuff, just keeping my mind clear, making sure I'm I'm on the right you know right mindset, making you know because he knows I, I'm telling you I, I overthink a lot. So all my boys, if they know me, if you know me, all my boys they, they know. So they be like you know just sending me scriptures and just making sure my mind's clear 
in the morning and stuff like that. And my boy be getting me right, man. That you know what? Must be nice. Must be yes. nice. Yes, sir. There you go. <laughs> nice. There you go. Yes. <laughs> well, and, I like that. Uh, yes. Uh, well, I mean, uh, again, I, I can't thank you enough for doing this. And uh, this, I think, this will be a first of many uh, the, oh, that man. we're gonna we'll, we'll kind of do together. Uh, so uh, we'll check it out. But the only way that you can check it out, obviously, by following him on Instagram, and then also, hey, I might be a person, right? And uh, according to Woods Podcast, you can find that on. Uh, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook. All of those places. And then also Instagram, where I share a bunch of dumb memes. So there's that. So uh, go ahead and follow him. Follow me. Subscribe to the podcast. And uh, Rishan, you're subscribed to the pod- podcast, aren't you? Oh, I'm about to do that right now. See? Right now, right now, not later, later. So be like Rishan. Right now. Yes. And go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. But if you don't believe me, you don't believe Rayshawn, and I don't know why you wouldn't, well, here's Zeta Zang to help convince you. Hey, this is Zeta Zang. Make sure you subscribe to According to Woods YouTube.